in the week that was in British politics. Richie Rich, Sunak, gaslighting and grandstanding outside 10 Downing Street, talking about terror and extremism, talking about Islam. It was all going so well till he mentioned the far right. You know, me, Stephen, the rest of you public who pay your taxes, the far right, the British people who just want British culture preserved, people who are angry, you know, taxpayers' books being sent everywhere, millions, billions, billions to the Americans' arm companies in the name of helping out in Ukraine and everything else that goes with that. We probably are, as the British police have said, the head of the British police, the greatest threat to this country is the far right. Yeah, that's the people, working class people, people who pay taxes, people who are fed up with driving down the road in your car, getting the shit knocked out of you because of the potholes. A car you can hardly afford to fill. Bills you can hardly afford to pay. But he's told the police to get out there and do their job. Three other people spring to mind in the week that was. George Galloway. George Galloway has now been elected in a by-election. MP for Rochdale. Back in the Houses of Parliament. Divisive to say the least. That lad. Got Lee Anderson. Put his head above the parapet taking on Sadiq Khan and his ways and mates. Half hero, half anti-hero. And then Suella Braverman. Boo, the pantomime boos. Who basically said what Richie Rich is saying now two months ago. Is he going to apologise? Listen, it's worth mentioning Amongst us now, there are people from a certain culture and religion who are happy to be in this country, settled in communities. Those pe people equally are fearful of the future. They don't want extremism, they don't want Sharia law, they just want to go about their business. Same as me. Today, we're off to Scarborough, a beautiful sunny day. That's all I want to do. The police, they've stepped it up this weekend, gone. The British police, they've arrested 12. I don't know why that's in the whole of Great Britain from the protests. I'm wondering what's going to happen to the people they've arrested. Because the last three, who had the hand gliders, about their selves, went in front of a judge who let them walk free. The same judge this week has given people or a person two years in prison for stickers, stickers, bumper stickers and the like. Yet the content of them stickers is uncomfortable reading in some cases, but two years. Our legal system now, two-tier legal system, as the police, but to the police. 12 people arrested. So I saw them arresting one young man. There was a group of them. We can tell who they are. The get backs, yeah? With the beards, the short, not stocky, portly ones. Not interested in getting involved. You've got the female or lasses wandering aimlessly and clueless, getting in the way. And then you've got them that's going to get stuck in, who haven't got a clue how to restrain someone safely. I saw that in the prison service. I did my riot training. Riot training in the prison service is very similar to the police and the army. For me, it's got to be tough. It's got to be real. You should be out of breath. You should also learn something. Me... I was happy to do that training. All the lads from Strangeways I went with were happy to do that training. We got stuck in, we did our bit. 
we got battered and bruised, got a little bit fitter. But half the people there training, there was about 250, 250 people from various prisons and establishments. Half of them didn't want to be there. The police are the same now, aren't they? They're not fit for purpose. I don't know what sort of restraint training the police have. I do know a lad from the prison service went to the police training them. Looks crap. Or, not out of practice, they've never practiced, they've never done it, they've never arrested anyone. So now they're in the middle of a situation where they've got to take people out and it looks unprofessional, it's embarrassing. The eyes of the world are on them. In prison you don't see that. Towards the end of my career, I was maybe a minute and a minute a half arriving on the scene of an incident. That's a long time that, that's a lot of staff filtering onto a wing or unit before you. I've run onto that wing, following loads of staff and I've had hands on a prisoner, restraining them. Staff stood around looking, not interested, pretending it's not happening. The police look like that. We've got some real sad sacks, haven't we, that we have employed. There was two outside my local spa. This is worth the mention. One from an ethnic background and a guy who, well, let's just say five foot six, maybe 25 stone. They were coppers, not PCOs, plastic coppers who were being put on the street to make numbers up, I believe. So this guy's eyeballing me, the one from the ethnic background. 15 meters, 10 meters, five meters. He's looking directly at me. So I says to him, are you all right? Very politely, stares through me. I said it again, are you all right? Stares through me, I goes in the shop. When it comes out, he's eyeballing me again. So I went, you all right? Nothing. The other guy was now looking at me. Yeah, so I went, all right, just a nod, a friendly nod, like you do. I talk to people, anybody coming in and out of the shop, walking the dog, especially ladies, try and make them comfortable. I'm a big lad. You know, got some little old lady walking up street. I'm walking down street with dog. Yeah, you all right, love? They smile. Yeah, I'm all right, thank you. That's what you do, you talk to people. Both of them fucking blanked me. You can't communicate. Police cannot communicate. They're not fit for purpose. You can give them all the training in the world. If they're not willing to get involved, they're clueless. They are soft. Again, being a police officer is a combat sport, very much so now. It's gonna get very real now in these next 12 months for me. This week, or maybe fortnight, a lot's happening in this country. There's a lot of talk about things now, as in other countries. Like I said, France, 12 hours to deport a hate preacher stroke imam who wasn't supportive of French people or culture. Wasn't supportive. I'm just going to leave it there on this beautiful day. The boy is in the distance. Let's see what happens now, guys. Like I said, Lee Anderson and George Galloway, round of applause for both of them. They've got people talking, whether you love them or hate them. Divisive or not. Gaslighting or not. Something needs to happen in British politics. Like I say, I'm in the wilderness, me. I have no affiliation. I'm waiting for that someone to come forward who's about British culture and British people. I'm quite happy for families to come here and settle, but not boatloads full of single young men Third world culture, third world conflict, third world violence. Stephen! Stephen! Come see your fans. Thanks for your continued support. God bless you all. Thanks for coming. I'll see there.